What's going on, Vinyl community? Welcome to another video with the Record Spinner. And yes, the record wall is behind me once again, just like my older videos. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a vinyl haul showcasing the records that I got for my 22nd birthday. So on this past Friday, September 13th, Friday the 13th, I uh, celebrated another birthday, the Big 22, uh, time well spent with my friends, family, and girlfriend. And the great thing about birthdays is that um, it enables me to build the collection more with wonderful pieces of vinyl to add to my collection. And that is exactly what I'm going to show you guys in this video, both in terms of what I received as gifts and also what I, res um, what I purchased afterwards. But before we get into the birthday vinyl, I want to mention real quick that I created some playlists on this channel. Um, which showcase the different types of videos that I do on the channel, such as the record store vlogs, the unboxings, the vinyl hauls, um, the reissue videos that I do, things like that. So if you're one that likes to sit down and binge watch videos in one sitting, then perhaps check out those playlists on my channel and you can get a glimpse of all of the types of videos that I do. And I'm also going to showcase uh, some of the other cool music-related gifts that I received for my birthday, which I think are rather notable for being showcased. And what I'm going to show first is something that I think all of you King Crimson fans will really dig. Check it out. So we got the Sailor's Tales box set and the Starless box set. Um, these past several months, I have been on a manhunt to get these box sets uh, for the best possible price because they're not cheap by any means. And uh, this birthday was fantastic because along with the vinyl, got these sets. So the Sailor's Tale set covers the period of Poseidon, Lizard, and Islands. Uh, so you get uh, those albums uh, remixed in 5.1 and stereo. And you also get a bunch of other um, audio content in terms of alternate mixes and takes and studio run-throughs you also get some live versions of some of this material done by the current lineup and then you also get all of the live recordings from this period um, it has been quite the undertaking listening to all this and i'm still working my way through it it's all on the laptop and i'm listening to it you know slowly but surely but um it's been quite the trip. Um, this is one of my favorite periods of Crimson to uh, really dig into. And I'm really glad that I have this set. And then we get to my all-time favorite period, which is the Starless and Bible Black period. Um, so with this set, obviously, it focuses on that album. You get three multi-track uh, live shows. And then you get a bunch of other stereo reel-to-reel -reel soundboard recordings. You also get the Starless and Bible Black album remixed in stereo in 5.1. And then you also get a lot of audience recording bootleg uh, style shows on this as well. And um, hearing all of the improvisations that this band did live on stage is just absolutely insane. Like this lineup was perhaps the tightest lineup that Crimson had. So really glad to have this as well. And then just because it is vinyl related, um, I also got this little scotch tape dispenser but in the style of a turntable check that out so you open it up just like this has a dust cover and right where the record is is the tape as you can see and where the uh, tone arm it is is where the blade is so you can go ahead and rip the tape up just like that so i thought this was actually really cool i saw someone use this at my local target and i'm like i need to get that and for a while, I thought it would just be a stocking stuffer for Christmas, but um, my godmother pulled through. Thank you very much for this. So anyways, enough of all that. Let's jump into the vinyl. So the first record I'm going to show is the record that my girlfriend gave me for my birthday. And uh, usually when it comes to her and buying me vinyl, she likes to pick out stuff that has some sort of like sentimental like value to it between us. Uh, but... In this case, with the John Denver records gone on my list, it was kind of uh, interesting to see what she would pick. So she actually went ahead and picked this right here. This is the Nirvana Sliver 7-inch. And the reason why she picks this is because she's a very talented artist and she likes the color palette on this um, on this sleeve. So really cool to have this. This has been on my Amazon list for like four years and no one has bought it. And it's easily obtainable and... I don't know, finally got it now, which is great. Here's the back side, and it comes on the uh, yellow and white sub-pop label. I put it in the nice anti-static sleeve. 
really really good stuff and honestly listening to this i mean granted it's just two tracks but it really kind of ignited my love for nirvana again so i need to kind of uh, dig through what else is out there in terms of vinyl and uh, build up the Nirvana collection. So I'm very glad to get this. Thank you, honey. Mwah. Now we are on to the records that I got from my godmother. And then between like her and my parents, I just give them my wish list and I say, anything is fair game. Pick whatever you think is cool. And that's kind of usually what they go by. So first she got me Deep Purple Stormbringer. Now, this album came out back in 1974. This was the last album to come out from the sort of classic Deep Purple period, which featured Richie Blackmore on uh, guitar. And you can really sense a change in this album. With This is the second album with David Coverdale and Glenn Hughes, and they're already kind of bringing in this sort of funk kind of element to the band because one i mean they were new guys on burn but now that they're members they start putting in their two cents and the sound kind of changes and you can really sense that on this record and to be honest like the only stuff that like blackmore really shines the best on is the title track and soldier of fortune which is kind of towards what richie does now with his blackmore's night type stuff uh but very glad to have this album it's a great record i must say you get the lyrics on the back and then what's really cool with this pressing is that it comes on a rather aptly colored piece of deep purple vinyl, which is really nice. You get the purple records uh, label there. Really, really nice stuff. Very happy to have it in the collection. And the next pick uh, was actually a rather interesting pick because um, I did not suspect I would probably get this from my godmother. She just saw it and picked it and there it went so this is the first album from waxahatchery this is called american weekend um waxahatchee is an artist i think i mentioned this before uh she opened up for courtney barnett uh recently on her uh last u.s tour really liked her material so i've been kind of slowly getting her albums little by little and uh with this album it's kind of like a similar Kurt Vile situation. Her sound has been more polished recently, but her early, early stuff is very much in the lo-fi, um, the lo-fi vein. So, um, I'm really excited to listen to this album. Love the artwork. And what's really cool, um, you also get an insert full of the, uh, the album lyrics. This is actually a limited variant, which I was not aware of when I added it to the list. I was just adding the album to begin with. This comes on white vinyl, which is really, really cool. So I'm really uh, excited to uh, dig into Waxahachie's uh, earlier work and see how it kind of stands up with some of the later stuff that she's done. And then up next was, I think, an obvious pick. Uh, my godmother is absolutely in love with this particular band. And I figured after getting their greatest hits, I ought to work my way back and start getting some actual albums. And I got... Def Leppard's Pyromania. This was the first real big one on here. So you get a photograph, of course, Foolin uh, Rock of Ages. Those are like the big heavy hitters. Uh, this was the band's third album i believe and um yeah these guys really pulled through with this like this was the real breakout kind of moments it's funny i actually came very close to getting this at the fye that i worked at and i just remember you know i just didn't want to spend any, any more money than i was at the time and my co-worker is a big Def leopard fan and i was like hey do you want me to put this aside for you and she's like oh yeah please and i'm like thank you i can't be spending any more money so it comes in a printed red inner sleeve. And that's kind of very fitting because the vinyl itself comes on opaque red vinyl. As you can see, it comes on that sort of sunburst vertigo label there. There you go. Really nice stuff. This is a recent uh, reissue that was done. Universal has been putting out colored variants of certain albums done by artists on their roster. And uh, this was one of those albums, and I'm really glad to have a proper Def Leppard album in my collection, Pyromania. <coughs> and up next is an album that has intrigued me for the very, you know, longest time. 
and um, came close to getting it a couple times in the past, but I just never really got there, and I finally received it on my birthday, and this is an album that I'm just really eager to listen to in its entirety for the first time ever. And that is the theme to The Exorcist. I'm kidding. It's Tubular Bells by Mike Oldfield. Uh, so what intrigues me with this album is the way that it was done. Um, Mike Oldfield plays everything on this record, all instrumental, taking up two sides of vinyl, and pretty much launching Virgin Records, Richard Branson sort of label extension, and being one of the best sellers of the label. It's just an absolutely intriguing story. And I think it's the ultimate, like, almost protocol for any young aspiring musician to just do what you want, have free reign in the studio, and just do whatever you think is cool. I just, I love that vibe of this album. And also, the music itself is just absolutely groundbreaking I guess I would say I mean I've heard samples of this I have not listened to this album in its entirety but this is one that I just feel like I need to have in my collection and I'm um, really glad to experience it as well so we get a Prince of Inner Sleeve which kind of talks about the history of the album and what was going on at the time comes on black vinyl really really good stuff cannot wait to li listen to this once and for all <clears throat> so that was what the godmother gave me. Now I'm going to get to what my parents gave me. And with this uh, next album I'm going to show, this was just a case where I was just adding whatever albums came to mind of this particular band that I had just started getting records of. And by started getting records, I mean just getting like one album to start with. And if that was it, great. And if, you know, if, if I want more, I'll seek it out. I was really feeling the bug, and I actually got a proper album of theirs. It's kind of like the Def Leppard situation. I got the greatest hits, and I start working my way back. So this right here is Credence Clearwater Revival uh, Bayou Country. Uh, of course, on this album, you get Born on the Bayou, uh, Proud Mary, of course, uh, Good Golly Miss Molly. Uh, this right here is a recent Craft uh, Recordings reissue. And what's really nice is that it kind of comes on the old-fashioned tip-on jacket uh, style, which is really nice and deluxe. Nice polyline sleeve. You get the blue fantasy logo here, the logo of the label. And this was um, mastered by Miles Showell at Abbey Road um, at half speed, so it's just, I cannot wait to see what this album sounds like in this format. And honestly, like, I, I added this album, I added Green River, uh, Cosmos Factory, and I think I added one or two others, and I figured if they drop on uh, on Amazon in price, I'll snag them, but it's really cool that my parents got the ball rolling with this particular album, Bayou Country. All right, and then the next record I'm going to show you is uh, one that my I know for a fact my dad picked, because him and I are big fans of this particular guy, and oddly enough, um, I did not really have any albums which stem from his sort of reemergence in in the music game um i have pretty much most of his sort of early you know warner brothers stuff but i did not have anything during the 80s so i thought this would be a good opportunity to stock up and um turns out that i did so so i got Trash by Alice Cooper. Now, this is notable for featuring Poison, which is the big hit at, that he had at the time. And this, of course, also features House of Fire, Bed of Nails, and the title track. Just great, you know, 80s Alice stuff. This is the music on vinyl pressing, so it has a nice, shiny, liquid, laminated cover. And then we also get an insert, which has all of the lyrics, which is cool. And then we get a nice piece of 180 gram vinyl. Comes with the blue Epic label. Really, really nice stuff. So glad to have some 80s Alice in my collection. And I also got to get, there's also, um, there's Hey Stupid, Constrictor is one of them, Raise Your Fist and Yell is another one. So I'll build it piece by piece. But until then, I'm quite satisfied with this album here. And then we shift from 80s hard rock to nice English folk with A Treasury by Nick Drake. Um, Nick Drake is one of my favorite musicians. Um, he's just 
he resembles one of those, you know, sad just heroes from back in the day. Just a shining star that faded away really, really young. And this album here, which is a compilation of stuff from his three main studio albums and then um, a posthumous release, um, is a great testament uh, to his craft, his abilities, um, his songwriting talents, just his everything about him. It's just absolutely wonderful. Um, you get uh, The Riverman, Cello Song, Pink Moon's a notable one, Northern Sky uh, is a beautiful track, uh, Fruit Tree um, from the Morning. I mean, just this is amazing. Nick Drake's albums should be in every record collector's collection, whether it's the originals or the reissues, which are fantastic. Uh, comes with a inner sleeve, which has... Uh, liner notes on this side and it also comes with almost kind of like the old beaten up island records inner bag from back in the day which is really cool they do that with the uh the reissues of his older albums but i like how they went ahead and added that touch and then of course staying true in fashion in terms of replicating everything as everything was intended we get the replication of the island label there which is really nice and this was mastered by Kevin Gray, so I'm actually quite excited to listen to this and see what Kevin does to uh, Nick Drake's recording. So it's really nice to have this Nick Drake compilation in the collection. And then we have another one that I know is a firm favorite of my dad's. This is one of his favorite Elton John albums, and that is the 171170 live album. So this uh, album, which came out back around... 1971 uh never meant to come out at first um it was mainly because bootlegs were being released of this particular radio broadcast that elton had done for this radio station and uh gus dudgeon who is elton's producer wanted to put it out just to kind of beat the bootleggers and um this is not the full uh performance um Recent editions, whether it's CD or like the record store day version had restored um the contents of the show and presented it uh, but this is a full-on replication of the original album you get a lot of tracks off of elton john's self-titled album um you also get a track off of the friends soundtrack that he did and then you even get some covers of honky tonk women and get back by the beatles so you have elton on the front here and then you have his band on the back you got nigel and d there inner uh printed inner sleeve not printed inner sleeve polyline sleeve and then you get the DJM label there, which is quite nice. And I'm telling you, little by little, it's not because of the movie. It's just simply my curiosity. Um, my Elton John collection has been growing. So I've been slowly but surely getting more and more of his albums and digging deeper into his, uh, his recording legacy. And so far, I'm liking what I'm hearing. And I'm really excited to dig into this. And then we have another compilation, and uh, I think this is a rather standard, notable, you know, almost perfect compilation to get when it comes to digging into this particular era of the band. So this is the Beach Boys' Endless Summer. Now this compilation came out in the early 70s. Uh, this was one of those albums, along like with Spirit of America, that really kind of reignited the Beach Boys' sort of interest in the public eye, because uh, this covers that sort of surf period, like from the beginning, before Pet Sounds. And then once they did Pet Sounds, they tried to fit in, and they were just kind of laughed at, but they still kept doing their thing. And then with this album, they pretty much became relevant again. So of course you get Surf and Safari, Surfer Girl, Catching a Wave, Be True to Your School, Little Deuce Coop. I mean, it's... It's the stuff that they still play live to this day, essentially. Uh, you get the artwork all replicated here. Nice skate fold sleeve. And then what's really cool is that since this came out in the 70s, Capitol had a certain type of label. They had the orange label back then. Uh, they went from the color band thing to the, to the orange Capitol. And that is exactly what's replicated there for the sake of being true to the time that it was uh, released in. And also another interesting thing too that I noticed is that we have side one on this side, but then on the other side we have side four. 
Now this is a certain process, I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but um, I know that my copy of Rush's All the World's a Stage is like that. So um, it is believed that some double albums back in the day did come out like that with side one on one side, side four on the other. So I thought that was actually rather cool that they went that far to replicate that. So that was really, really nice. Beach Boys Endless Summer. So that is what I received as gifts. And then I got a, um, a Visa gift card and then I went on Amazon and added some stuff that I had my eye on for a while and I decided to fill some more holes in my collection. So the first one up was kind of the first dead giveaway album that I knew that I wanted to get. And I think at this rate with how much Jimi Hendrix stuff I've been buying, I think this might be the last one for a little while. So this is the People, Hell, and Angels album. Now this came out back in 2013. This is one of those albums that the estate had stated that this is all new, unreleased material, sequenced it like an album. And I believe the name People, Hell, and Angels was an album name that Hendrix had considered back in the day when he was making his fourth album at the time uh, before he passed. Now, a lot of the recordings on here, some of them appear on like those 70s albums like Crash Landing and Midnight Lightning and such, but we do get some other like unreleased material on here as well. You get renditions of Hear My Train A Comin', Isabella, um, Villanova Junction Blues, uh, just, you know, great stuff from Hendrix. I mean, it's amazing how much stuff exists in terms of studio content between all of the box sets that have been done and some of the dagger records releases and these releases here it's just amazing i love the sleeve it kind of has a nice sort of kind of foil look to it i don't know if you can really make it out on camera but it has like a nice shiny almost metallic look to it and then as always you get a nice book liner notes about each song talks about the time frame what Hendrix was doing in the studio and then of course rice paper sleeves pressed a quality record pressings uh, this one was mastered by Bernie Grunman flawless pressings from QRP um, that's just that I mean I just love buying Hendrix stuff because it's amazing quality and for a fraction of the price and I'm gonna do a whole video later on about the Jimi Hendrix uh, reissues that have been going on lately this is just absolutely fantastic stuff can't wait to sink my teeth into this and up next is an album that I needed to get to sort of kind of go the next step in terms of this band's sequence of albums and um, I remember it dropped like $13 at one point, like a long time ago, and I never snagged it, and I kind of wish I did, because that's not a bad price for this album, but needless to say, I finally have it now. So this is Iron Maiden's Fear of the Dark. Now this album came out back in 1992. This was Bruce Dickinson's last album um, when he was the vocalist before he came back in 1999, and he's been with the band since then. You get the title track, of course, which is a live favorite. Just listen to the Rock and Rio version of the title track of this album. It's breathtaking. Um, you also get Be Quick or Be Dead, From Here to Eternity, Afraid to Shoot Strangers, Wasting Love, which is almost like Maiden's only ballad that they ever did in their career. Um, great record. And I think the last time I literally listened to this album, which I have on CD, was like when I was a freshman in high school. So it's been a long time. So I'm quite excited to dig into this. Nice cover. Here's the band on the back side. And then you open it up. You get the lyrics. And then you get individual photos of the band members and credits. I'll showcase one of the records. They all look the same throughout. But we get nice polyline sleeves. Nice custom label, really good stuff. And this was also mastered by Chris Bellman, so I'm uh, very excited to see what he does. Um, I know Sean McGee did the early Maiden reissues, like the 80s albums, and then everything from like 90s to beyond is, um, is all done by Chris. And both engineers have done fantastic jobs, so I'm quite excited to listen to this. And then up next is an album that like I kind of juggled on getting because I was thinking to myself, I purchased a lot of Paul McCartney stuff lately. I was close to getting Egypt Station. 
I know I'll get it at some point, and I listened to it. It's a fantastic record. I wanted a vinyl copy of it, but I decided to hold off. I decided to focus on the other Beatle that had a very intriguing solo career. And when I saw this album and I saw the track list, I was like, great, this all of these songs now have a home on this one album. So that, that was kind of the main draw with this. And, of course, what I'm talking about is... John Lennon, Shaved Fish. Now, this includes a lot of the non-album singles that Lennon had did leading up to, like, kicking off his sort of solo career. So we have Gift Peace a Chance, Cold Turkey, Instant Karma, Power to the People, like, a lot of those singles that didn't, like, find a home on albums. But then again, of course, you also get Mother, you get Imagine, um, let's see, Mind Games, so you... It's a good blend of non-album singles and album tracks. I love the uh, the artwork on this, how like each track is represented. Here's the back side. And then we get the lyrics right here. And then we have like the nice Japanese flag here. Then we take out the vinyl. Being very careful there because I don't want to scuff it. And as always, Apple label here and of course this is side a and then as always there's side b so really really good stuff and like i said it's nice to have all of those singles and oddities onto one album and then we have a record by a band that i don't have any records of this is quite shocking uh this is a band that I, I like them, not to the full extent as Maiden, because I would say Iron Maiden is my favorite band to come out of the sort of era that a lot of other bands came out of, which is the new wave of British heavy metal. But I think, if anything, this is the next, you know, best obvious pick. And I went ahead and got myself a copy. Judas Priest, British Steel. Of course, you get Breaking the Law. Living After Midnight, uh, Grinder, Steeler, The Rage. I mean, just a fantastic Priest album. Here's the backside. And then we also have the uh, album cover as part of the Prince of Inner Sleeve along with the lyrics. And then for the vinyl, we have a nice sort of uh, representation of the cover on one side. And then we have the text on the other so really glad to have this as my first uh judas priest album and i do have others that i want to get i want to get screaming for vengeance of course unleashed in the east which is a great live record um the hellbent for leather album and just a whole bunch of others i'm really really glad to start the judas priest collection all right now we are on to the final album of this haul and i think this is the most left-wing album of this haul. It's just completely different compared to everything else that I've showcased here. Um, I picked this up at the local FYE that I work at. Um, I had a little bit left on my uh, Visa gift card to not necessarily cover a vinyl purchase on Amazon, so I just used it at my store, and I, of course with the employee discount, I got a really good deal on it. And um, this is a band that I don't really go to that much i do like some of their work and i think their lead vocalist has a astonishing range uh but i figured i would give this album a chance because i do like the style that this album is rooted in and i have heard a couple of the songs from it thanks to my girlfriend because this is her favorite band and i figured maybe she would like the fact that i actually have this album in my collection so i got panic at the disco a fever you can't sweat out so this is the band's first album, which came out back in 2006. So it was right in the middle of that whole pop punk thing that was going on, uh, along with other bands such as Paramore. And it also kind of makes sense because them and this band were on the uh, Fueled by Ramen label. And um, yeah, it's mid 2000s pop punk at its finest. Uh, Brendan Urie has a fantastic voice. And of course, the big hit off of this is... Um, I Write Sins, Not Tragedies, but of course there's other um, notable tracks on here like uh, Lying is the Most Fun a Girl Can Have Without Taking Her Clothes Off, Constantly Thank God for Esteban, um, just 
those crazy long run-on titles similar to what Fallout Boy did. Uh, but this particular pressing comes with a nice gatefold of the artwork. And we also get a rather nice big blow-up poster of the album cover here. And then we also get the lyrics on this side. And then I won't take the vinyl out just because I don't want to scuff it, but I believe there are um, die cuts for the center labels, which I will show. Once I can get this poster back in. There we go. So it comes on these nice um, custom center labels here. Really, really nice stuff. And if anything, this will be an album that I'll listen to with my girlfriend because, like I said, she loves this band. And uh, I think she'll appreciate the fact that I have this in my collection. So there you go. That is my 22nd birthday vinyl haul. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the record spinning.